It's called Upon My Sister Leaving for College. In our house, my father has lived not exactly happy, but stable. Therefore, he has lived reasonably happy, doing people's taxes, playing his guitar, trying to give. Since I left for college, my sister has been a dissonance, a delinquent, arguing constantly with my mother, but she has been there. At any given time, my father returns home to cooked salmon, his undershirts neatly folded, photographs of his daughters and two cats. My mother, the chef, the doctor, the comedian, has given us everything she says until she was empty, but everything we did not want or never asked for. Of course, she will put it differently, with the phrase ungrateful as the main ingredient, she will say that giver is her middle name. My whole adolescent life I have known her as tectonic plates moving at odds, have tiptoed around her as a fisher. She dreams of cemeteries, lives in fields of her dead family for whom she bled out, trying to keep them alive. Her addictions surface like weeds in a flower bed. She dreams of being buried in an avalanche of her possessions, seeing objects only as trash or treasure. It has been this way since 1984. He makes the money, she makes the home. Anniversaries when we must patronize the formality of sitting around a table together are the most dreaded occasions. In our house, my parents have lived stably and unhappy for periods of time like blank music staffs, punctuated by the discordant notes of my mother's sloppy drunkenness, my mother's imposition of her emptiness on others. I am older now and have dealt with my anger the only way I knew how. I have decided to be a world traveler and I refuse to take the baggage of others with me. I leave others in order not to sacrifice the way my mother has. She has taught me the bittersweet lesson not to base my happiness on others. I have been called selfish. Though I have been asked to, I have never apologized for my leaving. Meanwhile, my sister packs unsteadily. She is giddy and sick with her sea legs. The horizon that has always seemed so small has revealed itself as multitudinous as Medusa's glorious braids. She knows that what she leaves behind will be hostages with black plastic bags over their heads waiting to be executed. We know that what we believed are anchors are not as heavy as we thought or else are not anchors at all. For the first time, my father contemplates the reality of his own emptiness. Until now, he could say he was reasonably happy. He could say he came home to two daughters and two cats, a home that had been plowed like a field, vacuumed daily of cat litter and dead skin cells, turned over with a trowel or soup spoon, made like a bed. The strings of the guitar were taut and tense, but they could make music. Everyone I know is moving on. In our house, stability sings a swan song. There is no lullaby to placate anger. There are no real barriers, which is to say there are no holds barred, which is to say there are only real barriers. There is only a body pillow to separate their sides of the bed. In our house, there will be nothing left to dilute anger. Days stretch out like a slain accordion as my mother absorbs an empty nest into her own emptiness. breeze through this. Uh, this next poem is called Jeanette. Four arms can ache. I learned this the day after I went rock climbing, just happening to be lone adult among weightless monkey limb children. As I clung to cheerful handholds with all the strength of my anxiety, I felt that I was hanging off the fold of the flat earth. I had thought that I no longer felt fear. He, new lover, no novice, called from below, be a spider skittering along the wall. Paralyzed, forearms working overtime even more sore the next day than the parts he fucked. You and I are on the edge of forward movement. On this night, humid with streetlights, smelling like Long Beach, there are shadows on your forehead and the white gazebo. There is unobtrusive recurrent lightning over the crabapple tree. We try to convince each other of what we know. Lust leaves no logical footprint. To our left, the Babylon line rattles neon. We are on the edge of forward movement, like a train, like a lover who knows if it's reckless, it will pass. It is passing. We resume our casually curse-laden conversation about change. Thank you.